Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. I'm Barry Bryson, and um, uh, we're continuing our study of Second Peter. We're in Second Peter chapter one. Last time we were together, we talked about that that growth process that begins with knowledge, that begins with God supplying all of our resources, and then requires of us first faith, and then the hard work of living that faith, and that then produces um, self-control, uh, knowledge, greater knowledge, and then self-control, and then and then the the strength to bear up, you know, the 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 uh, perseverance that then produces deeper connection with God, which produces deeper connection with each other, and we arrive at the end product, which is agape love, but these things continue to increase and our capacity for one leads to a greater capacity for another. And he's described that process in these previous verses. I took up nearly nine minutes of your time yesterday. Today, we're gonna to focus on verses 10 and 11. So much is happening there. We have another therefore, therefore. Um, we started with God giving us everything that pertains to life and godliness through knowledge. Then we have this process Therefore, therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be abundantly supplied to you. Verse, verses um, uh, 2 through 11 are a complete circle and they're tied together with three strands one is the whole notion of things being multiplied of growth that god is exponentially like compound interest god is exponentially supplying you with all you need grace and peace be multiplied to you abundantly supplied we're looking at verses two and three it ends with abundantly supplied to you so it's it's tied together with that, it's also tied together um, with the fact that you know, that, that this is this that the, that God is the supplier, that God is the one who continues to provide. But it also is tied together by the notion of our hard work. Work very hard. Be diligent. Work very hard. Verse five, and it ends. Work very hard and practice, practice, practice. Um, it's something that we do and that we get better at the more we do it. And and he's saying that to us, this growth, this journey. We talk about discipleship being following and, and we're following in the footsteps of Jesus. A disciple is by definition someone who follows, but we're not on a, the Appalachian Trail. The way we follow is to do, it's to practice, it's to work very hard, that we're diligent which comes to English from diligence, the French word, um, which doesn't really capture, and at least to my ear and my mind, the, 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 the muscularity of the Greek word. It means to do the heavy lifting. Work very hard. You, you have to bust your knuckles and you have to sweat to accomplish this. Uh, you, so there is, there is this balance, this, maybe I shouldn't even say balance, but I should say this, harmony this homogeneity between the uh, you know uh, uh, the weaving into a single piece of cloth the notion that god does it and we have to work hard god supplies us with everything and we have to work hard and we have to grow and if we don't grow we're not going to complete the journey but i thought when i was baptized i was saved you were <laughs> you were you were saved but our journey has just begun. Now we're on the straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life. We have to complete the journey. Peter makes that clear. We, we have to finish the journey. There's something else in these two verses that I want us to notice. <clears throat> he talks about our calling and our election. And as this is going to be one of the themes, it's one of the themes throughout 1 Peter and 2 Peter. And it's, it's important for the time. Christians are being persecuted. The Romans have finally figured out that Christians are not Jews, that they're separate, that they're a different group. And, and that 
it puts Christians at risk in a certain way because Judaism is a legalized religion. It, it is a discredited religion, and the Romans have destroyed Jerusalem uh, because of the Jewish uprising, but it's still legal to practice Judaism throughout the empire. And throughout First and Second Peter, Peter keeps asserting what Paul also asserts throughout his writings. We are the true Israel. We are the chosen people. That's why in 1 Peter, he says, keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles. And he wasn't using air quotes, just like I did. Because he, he means we're the true Israel, and everyone who's not a Christian are the true Gentiles. Um, and, and so um, that's another theme. And calling and choosing takes us back to Abraham. He's not asserting some sort of Calvinist doctrine. He's taking us back to Abraham, that, that we're the ones who are the true children of Abraham, as, as Paul will argue in the book of Galatians uh, so, so strongly and so convincingly. So that's one of the themes that we see communicated in these two verses as well. Well, thank you. Next time, we'll pick up with verse 12, and we'll start getting really to the heart of the book. Uh, thank you for joining me for another five good minutes.